What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Lahan, crowned otaku. That's on my chest. Latest episode of Dragon Ball Super came out today. Today? Yesterday? One of these days. Anyways, straight fire, but so many questions. So, we're, it's in the Future Trunk. We're back to Future Trunk's era. And turns out, which I guess it kind of makes sense, but the things Trunks did and that the things that Future Trunks did during the Cell games, even though it affected the past, it didn't affect his future. So his timeline is set in stone. So that rules out a bunch of other theories where if you change something in the past, it changes the future. No, he returned to the same crappy home and now he has an even more devastating enemy to fight. So before I get into that, Trunks has a baby girl with him, Mai, who, if y'all don't remember, she's the girl in Emperor Pilaf's gang back in Dragon Ball, back in that season when Goku was a kid. She's that girl. Now, it's never shown on any episode when they are actually wished young again, which opens the gate to so many fan theories and people speculating. Like, it's never shown on camera. We're all guessing it happened sometime during the Cell games. That's the only time when they could have been wished. It, I don't believe it was in any movies. The GT isn't canon anymore, so nothing in that even matters. So, where did that all come from? How is she even there? I don't know. That's up in the air. Comment down below if you have a good re a good source, a reliable source. Not no Wikipedia. I could post on that and change everything. That don't count. But yeah, so that, that's my first question. She wasn't, she wasn't there when Future Trunks came back the first time. He didn't mention nothing about her. They talked about the future. Why wouldn't he mention like him and Maya fighting the androids? No. He said everybody was dead. Everybody was dead except him and Bulma. So that's what I'm wondering first. Second... He never went Super Saiyan while he was fighting Black. Didn't go Super Saiyan 1, didn't go Super Cock Strong Trunks. Heck, I don't know how much time has transpired from that Android saga in his time, but he could have, He, I hope he would have learned how to go Super Saiyan 2 by now. He saw Gohan do it, why wouldn't he train to do the same thing? Or maybe it's because he's only like, what is he, one half? Yeah, Vegeta, Bone, son. Yeah, he's half Saiyan, so maybe like Gohan, he stopped training after he felt like he was powerful enough. I wouldn't, but that's just me. So, he never went Super Saiyan against this black dude. He just used his sword and he got beat. Of course you're going to get beat. This is what I don't like about the Saiyans. You're fighting a strong enemy. You know it's an enemy who is very strong. Why not start off at your strongest form? Don't try to beat him in an underwhelmed base level. No, go cock strong, put him in his place. Man, he didn't even go Super Saiyan. He pulled out a sword in base form. Fighting Frieza, he went Super Saiyan and destroyed him. That's when I fell in love with that Trunks. This Trunks looks like a wimp to me. But that, you know, that's just me. What do I know? Okay. Point number three. At the very end. No, wait. Before I get to that, that's going to be point number four. Point number three. Boma got destroyed. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe I'm just a sick person. But I thought that was well deserved and a long time coming. Boma been pissing off a lot of villains. And this dude, Black... Finally just yoked her up, blasted the whole place to smithereens. All you saw was her like lab coat scarf thing. He just getting disintegrated. And I was like, that's what happens. You messing with these enemies, you don't got no kind of strength. Somebody's going to lay you out. It took Black to lay her out. Now, I'm not, I don't think I'm a sick person. Like, yo, she been stepping to Frieza. She been stepping to Beerus. She stepped to Majin Buu a couple times. Like, don't just be stepping to these OP dudes thinking they're not going to lay hands. It's 2016. They're going to lay hands. Point number four, probably the best part of the episode. Hold on, I gotta get y'all ready for this. When Black revealed himself, it looked just like Goku. What y'all know about that? With what's going on? Now, he did have one earring in. I don't think it's the Potaru because when you put that in, it's like one person puts in a left, one person puts in a right. They fuse together. Vegito has two earrings. So when you fuse together, you have to have the two earrings on. It can't just be one. Or else the fusion breaks, right? I'm pretty sure that's... No, the fusion's forever. But we've seen it broken before, but the fusion is theoretically forever. So, is this actually Goku? A, a lot of theories say it's Goku who... Goku died from the illness in that future. Somebody revived him, and the earring is a control mechanism. Possible. Here's my theory. Ride with me on this. One thing with DBZ that I always wondered is they never explained Turles. If you don't know, I did a video on this about unanswered questions in anime. 
when I was doing that series. I'm bringing that back, by the way. I got a lot of questions. They never really explained Turles. If they play this right, this could possibly wrap it all up. Again, hear me out on this. Radis comes to Earth, says he's Goku's brother. They look nothing alike, right? Cool. We meet Goku's dad in some side stories. What was his name? You remember Goku's dad's name? Uh... Clone number one. Bardock. Bardock. Okay, yeah, yeah. Shame on me for not remembering. So we meet Bardock, right? But there's never a mention of his mother. We never get a Goku's mother mentioned. We do see the um, Bardock's potential side chick, but she gets destroyed by Frieza. Never mention Goku's mother. Now, I'm still getting to my point. Turles looks exactly like Goku. Never a mention of any kind of blood relation, though. What if... Bardock was arguably the strongest fighter on planet Vegeta. What if they cloned him? Ride with me on this. Hear me out. They cloned Bardock. So you have Raddus, who is the failed clone. Different body structure, the long hair. The weakest of the three Saiyans between Nappa, Vegeta, and Raddus. The weakest of the three. Failed clone. Goku. Promising. Looks just like Bardock. But he cried too much at birth, so they sent him to Earth to dominate Earth. If he could do that, they bring him back. Successful clone, right? Turles, same thing. Goku looks exactly like each other. Both look exactly like Bardock. Didn't cry when he was young, so they sent him off with a team. He found the Tree of Might, started taking over planets. Successful clone, until he ran into Goku. Y'all see where I'm going with this, right? What if Goku is a clone? And this black dude in Trunks' future is also a clone. What if Planet Vegeta, even when, what if when it was destroyed, they sent off all the clones they had in incubation, this one woke up? What are the chances? Come on, y'all, there's gotta be a good theory. And I think my theory of the clones is probably the best you're gonna get out there. It, it includes Turles, answers questions about Raddus, answers questions about Goku's mom, he doesn't have one, test two, baby, there you go. Clones are the strongest fighter, that's why Vegeta can never catch up to him. Almost on par but can never completely catch up to him because he is an enhanced, genetically modified fighter. Superior from birth, except for the crying. I think I got that on lock. But what do y'all think? The whole black thing, Trunks going back to the future with my, when did my turn? Young, exactly. Who knows? It's all up in the air. Anyways, y'all tell me what you thought of the episode. Comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. As always, share this with your mom, your dad, your uncle, your nephew, your auntie, your nieces, your cousins. I love y'all. And for y'all to get all this loving I have in my heart, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Come on. I know you want to. I got the best loving around.